Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game we've got Paladin Shepard playing the Tier 9 Royal Navy Heavy Cruiser Drake. It's a ship you don't see very often unless someone is <laughs> uh, racing to the Tier 10 Royal Navy Heavy Cruiser uh, which um, also seems not very often played. We're here in a ranked match of course. I don't see any camo there. Matchmaking, well, being ranked, no CV to worry about. A couple of battleships. A Tago is a, a great long range a HE spammer with a uh, heal. Neustrashimi, uh, another uh, heal ship. Uh, I've, I really enjoy Neustrashimi, it's very fun to play. It's really easy, though, to get overconfident with that heal. I've run into situations myself where I've debated in a split second about can I afford to trade some but sure, and then I get myself beat up more than I really can can afford. So let's hope that the bad guy does that in this case. Esther Gutland is, uh, well, it's a long-range, very quick, hard-to-spot torpedo spammer. The idea there, of course, uh, with... Most of the ships in that pan-European DD line uh, hit them with a torpedo, get them flooding, and then hit them again in a minute. And then, of course, Akazuki, which most are pretty familiar with. It's uh, a, an HE Spammer Deluxe. It's got uh, four turrets, eight total guns. Puts out a lot of shells, very quick reload. And torpedoes that hit like a Mack truck. Looks like the team is going to get the Charlie camp secured and then put a lot of boats over toward Alpha. Pomeran does not seem to be moving yet. Oh, there he goes. Okay, so he's moving now. So Pomeran is now underway. Wukong's already complaining about an ODD's going to A, although Yugamo and Cossack are both headed that way. Now, Cossack is a fantastic destroyer. It's one of my favorites by far. It has uh, a lot of guns that hit pretty hard. It's only got uh, one torpedo rack, but it can fire them one at a time, like most things in the Royal Navy in this game. And they reload pretty darn quickly. Spotter plane in the air, makes a long range shot on the Iowa, it falls just over the top. It looks like Iowa's turning in and slowing, so I think that shot's going to be quite wide of the mark, but not too surprising at 21.6 kilometers out. Cossack and Yugamo are both going to be in the Alpha Cap, and that's going to that's gonna be a big help. Now, the, the bad guys put multiple ships in the Alpha Cap right away, and that's giving them a little bit of a points advantage, but that's about to flip. Lands three shells on the Nustrashimi. Nustrashimi is almost certainly going to heal up and go dark here. Long range shot on the Iowa, and Nustrashimi does go dark. 33 seconds left on the fighter plane. I don't know whether we're going to get too many opportunities during that time here to, to put more shells on something. Okay, good guys have now secured the Alpha Cap, blind firing over the island. Mr. Gutland's at the corner. It's possible that uh, there will be some very fast torpedoes coming this way, but Wukong would spot them first, and the fact that we haven't seen them yet means the Mr. Gutland's probably hung on to them. Tago out there, you can see that. Pal was still detected, even though the Esther Goodland was inside of the islands there. So we knew somebody else was there. Nice shot. Took out a torpedo, too. Or rack. And looks like the Esther Goodland, just from position, yeah, he caught the Yugumo. Esther Goodland's using the island to try and be able to get close. And the Esther Goodland outguns the, uh, or the, uh, the Cossack outguns the Esther Goodland by quite a bit. Nice shot on the Otago as Pal weaves his way between the torpedoes, not taking any damage from them. Otago gets off the second set of torpedoes. Here they come. Not a very good drop. You can see the buffaloes out there as well. Kyle tried for the uh, 
the kill shot there, but the taco did angle up. Mr. Gutland goes down to fire from the Cossack. Torpedoes out on a wing and a prayer, hoping to catch the Otago. The Buffalo is sailing flat broadside, and this AP really hurts in a case like this. Seven kilometers out, this is just going to be devastating. Bam! Yeah, 30k, so that's, uh, you know, roughly two thirds of his hit points evaporate with five citadels. Pal switches to HE, I'm sure, anticipating the Buffalo is going to angle, but the Buffalo is not angling, so we'll probably see him switch back to AP here if I had to guess. Cossack goes down to concentrated fire from the Otago. You can see that Mr. Shimmy was on the outside edge of the uh, cap on the other side. Wukong pushing in, manages to finish off the Otago. This has got to be it for the Buffalo here. Uh, he's just sailing broadside. You can see that Pal has switched back to AP, probably in disbelief that the uh, Buffalo just continues to sail broadside. This will be all she wrote for the Buffalo. I don't have any doubt with AP at this range. On a flat broadside. Yep, a couple more citadels. A total of seven on the Buffalo, and down he goes. Nicely done, pal. So, taking a look at the bigger picture. Good guys uh, are down to five ships, bad guys down to four. Good guys have a two cap to one, two cap to one advantage. You can see the Palmer, even though his location, at least as far as I'm concerned, is not good. He says he did manage to get some citadels on. Presumably the Otago. And Pal opts to head a little bit south rather than push straight at the Iowa. I think that was a very good decision. Iowa shells hurt a lot in pretty much any cruiser. Pal gets on some shots and then skirts to safety behind the island. Well done. Hopefully some of those will land. There we go. Only takes one. Got a fire. Given that he's not currently under fire, Iowa goes ahead and repairs that right away. So, what's Iowa going to do? If Iowa pushes all the way around to this side of the island again, it's possible that Pal might catch him at this corner. These torpedoes, you know, they're not the best torpedoes in the world, but uh, you can catch a battleship at a corner with them. You can. It's possible to secure yourself a devastating strike. Meanwhile, Z-46 on the other side of the map got himself in trouble and pushed into... Uh, you can see the Akazuki there on the minimap. My guess is there were probably both DDs there. We haven't seen Mr. Shimmy for a while. His last known position. Okay, so yeah, they're both there. And Georgia is pushing straight at him. Now, Georgia's got great secondaries, and it's very fast. He can close that distance if he's... If he decides not to run and decides to push it, <laughs> I would just... Uh, well, that's a, that was a beat-down shot there. Wukong goes to the bottom. Cossack is uh, concerned about the state of affairs. Good guys down to three ships, bad guys still have four. Georgia has apparently decided he's going to stay and fight. does not look to me like he's angling to run. If he turns into those destroyers, of course, he's giving broadside to that outside edge, Iowa. He may be able to use the island for cover to some extent. But if one of those two destroyers don't catch him with torpedoes, the Iowa almost certainly will. Well, I don't know. Iowa's turning behind the island some more. Uh, I'm sure that... I'm sure the team's not happy about that, but that Iowa did lose a lot of hit points early. There's another fire on that Iowa, which might burn for a while since he had repaired the other. No, nope, I guess his repair was back up. Now, it looks to me, yeah, you can see the Georgia there. He's between the Nustrashimi and the Akazuki. He might get one here, but uh, I think I think he's done for. And if it's a trade, well, uh, I guess Palmer's in position to try to cover C. Georgia does take out the Akazuki with secondaries. Uh, the 
count on one hand the number of seconds that Georgia has left here. He's probably making a run for it through there, hoping Iowa doesn't catch Neuster Shimmy gets him with a tour. So now Palmer is presumably going to be trying to keep Neuster Shimmy out of the Charlie camp without dying. And this is what I was talking about a little bit ago. Pal has timed this very well. He's going to be able to catch the Iowa here at this corner. If he lands even one of these torpedoes, it's great. Because then he can, you know, swing the nose to starboard. And he's got torps on the other side as well. Single firing and trying to land as many as possible. So you got four out. There's another fire. So even if he gets sunk here between flooding and a fire, yeah, that really hurt. But that's four torpedoes in the Iowa. He's just about gone. He's done for here one way or the other. And I don't think he's going to be able to... Come back from that. No, that's it. Enemy well done, pal. Sunk. Victory is in sight. Every torpedo found its mark. Scratch one Iowa. Now, where's the enemy Iowa? Given what New Strashimi is doing, I'm wondering if Iowa didn't stay north. Guess we're going to find out here in just a second. You can see the detection range on the Drake is uh, is a very, very good, what is it, 10.4 kilometers, presumably with a captain that has concealment expert. So he may be able to stay unseen here for a little while. To fire or not to fire. He's got to worry about torpedoes too if he gets detected here. He is detected. Will Mr. Shimmy put torps in the water? Hydro's down. Wukong exhorting the Palmer to get a little more active in the game. Given the score, 860 to 622, this could be over any second. If Palmer does manage to blap the Mr. Shimmy, that's, uh, that's probably going to be enough to end the game as the difference in points continues to increase the two cap to one advantage adding to the good guys lead so I will say right now uh, pal fantastic game uh, looks like you're gonna try and do the same thing to this highway you did the last I wish you luck with that really well played it's pretty obvious how this is gonna turn out so I will thank you for sending this game replay file. Lots of fun to watch. Those of you watching with me, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, love to see them below. Hope you'll like and subscribe to the video. And I'll see you next time.